All right. Good morning, everybody. It is 632 on Wall Street, about three hours before the open of trading. It's time to get your global macro on with Quant Box Live, where we uncover the best fundamental opportunities across global markets. I love economics. So I studied it for five years at a little institution called Harvard. Very cool. For example, one of my professors in uh, macroeconomics uh, was an acting senior economist at the Fed. So he worked at the Boston Fed during the day. And then in the afternoons or evenings, he, uh, he taught macroeconomics at Harvard. Cool. What a cool, what a tough dude, though. I'm telling you, that was the hardest class out of the 36 or 40, whatever it was, classes I took. Uh, that was the hardest. He was the toughest guy. <laughs> but anyways, I uh, learned a few things, and it, uh, hopefully that shows my uh, passion and commitment. Very cool. So today we're looking at maybe is it a wake-up day? Yesterday was fairly quiet. We're going to see if we can get some intrinsic underlying trend return. We saw some green shoots, and then uh, they fizzled out. Sort of like a early spring that gets covered in the last blanket of snow. That's how they roll in Canada. <laughs> Wait for the flowers to come up and then boom, one more blanket of snow. Yeah. You don't want to be an iris in Saskatchewan. That's for sure. Anyways. Hey, we have lots of pretty colors. They all have meaning. We're looking at economic data on the long run. We're looking at, um, market and sentiment data in the short run. We're trying to combine these things to make intelligent and logical investment and trading decisions. It's very powerful stuff. If you're watching this on YouTube, swing on by, try it. It's not a lot of money. Let me remind you that trading is risky, not appropriate for everyone. Your past performance, good or bad, is not necessarily indicative of future results. Please stay small, stay humble, focus on the long term. Never risk money you cannot afford to lose. Ba, 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 ba. Let's go into the pro. Nice. <laughs> Wow. Bitcoin, huh? So I owned it at 68 at some point yes, uh, last week. I think I bought it at 62 and went to 68. And I'm like, oh, my God. And then it dropped to 64. <laughs> and now it's 71. Oh. <laughs> it's like riding a a bronco or a bull for eight seconds you know i don't know <laughs> doesn't sound like a lot of time but anyways wow is that a lot of volatility and of course now up five percent almost six percent for the day holy smokes so i guess those uh hold all right hang on for dear life yeah well that asset class is benefiting from all the new investors very cool Back below 109 or still below 109 on euro dollar. An improvement. I'm going to skip all the way over here, right? An improvement in yields. That means money's going back into treasuries. That's good, by the way. Okay. We're, we're funding our, our world. So that's good. Money is being made available. So that's good. That means the price of these assets are going up. Great. Uh, oil topping out around 82. Gold still at 2200. SP 500 not down. Okay. Yesterday wasn't a great day for the stock market, but today might be an update. We have some more news on the calendar. If you look down here, oops, let me. Uh, Zoom down. Uh, you can see what the different uh, stock markets around the world are doing. FTSE's really been uh, making a great comeback, huh? Look at that. Okay. 
Dow seems to be pretty flat. And that's what you want it to be doing. Japanese stock market is by far the highest, but again, kind of peaking out. And then S&P 500 flat. So S&P flat, Dow flat. UK trying to make a comeback. And Japan trying to maintain its incredible bullishness. It's incredible bullish run this year. There's that by the dip that we had way back in October. It took a long time. Look at this. By the time we get to about uh, February, the British stock market just slightly started to go up. Months behind everybody else, huh? Months behind everybody else. All right. So let's... Uh, Let's look in here and uh, ever so slightly risk off right now on the weekly evaluation. Okay. VIX has doubled week over week. Holy smokes. That's bad. Okay. SP 500 up slightly for the week, neither here nor there. Dollar slightly strong, neither here nor there. Yields are down significantly, 1% week over week. That's good. Yen is strong. Well, that's bad. <laughs> and gold is up. Now, I interpret that as bad, but you might interpret that as good. That's easy. That's easy. Okay, so anyways, uh, so that's how I look at it. And, uh, well, it just popped up. So, you know, one data point a trend does not make. So we'll see if this can stick. And then more importantly, will some of the other evaluations also show congruency, meaning will monthly go bearish as well as um, weekly? Or will weekly just kind of go back to neutral? Well, we'll find out, okay? But at least we got our eyes on all those prizes. So what happened overnight? Uh, let me think about it. Maybe Bitcoin went up. Yeah. Cool. I look at that and I often think like, oh, if I bought it at a thousand, one Bitcoin, which I wouldn't have done because I remember when that was. And back then you're like, where do you even buy a Bitcoin? <laughs> right. That's <laughs> right. So, you know, I wasn't a buyer, but if I was, it'd still only be 70,000. It wouldn't have changed your life. You're like, oh, well, you can go out and buy a car. Oh, great. <laughs> so the, when you see these teenagers or whatever, and they're like, I have $65 billion in Bitcoin. <laughs> You're like, wait, you paid three cents for your Bitcoin? <laughs> but boy, did you have a small window of time to do that, huh? Anyway, so uh, cool. I guess everybody uses leverage now. I couldn't imagine leverage <laughs> when you have that kind of volatility. But anyways, uh, yeah. Wow. Wow. So, yeah, my, uh, yeah. All right. And then we get rid of that. And we have a very decent scatter plot now, huh? It's very decent. It's a little all over the place. <clears throat> Excuse me. But the things that we would assume are would be up have been up. That's good. That's good. So DAX is up. NASI is up. That's cool. Gold is up. Yep. Why? Well, inf inflation is there. We're starting to see that. That's the narrative. We've had two months of inflation, and we've been bullish on this since um, February 14th, was it? Valentine's Day? I think we've been bullish on gold. Well, it's, it was bullish overnight, which is nice. What else is going on? Can you see a trend? 
Uh, cat is weak. Cat is weak. Oh, but cat is stronger than Swissy. Swissy is weak. Swissy is weak. Swissy is weak. Okay, it looks like we have a story of Swiss, the Swiss Frank is weak. Is there anything that might describe why? Oh, did they cut interest rates? Yeah. It's a funding currency, y'all. It always has been. You got a little carry trade going on. Swissy is weaker than the yen. Yeah. So pound Swissy went up, and you wouldn't expect that because pound right now is a dog with fleas. And it's weak, but that's not good. The Swiss franc is weak, and that's usually good. Switzerland wants a weak Swiss franc, and we like it because it's a funding currency like the yen. So cool, right on. So anything with the Swiss franc on it is benefiting. We call that leverage, basically, right? That's how you leverage up. You borrow a cheap and weak currency, and then you invest it into something better. Right now, that something better is anything, even a pound. Cool. Some of the things coming down, uh, pound kiwi is down. I just got a heads up from Tradars. Pound kiwi, down. <laughs> it's so great because they don't talk to each other. So it's just so good. <clears throat> it's just so good. And really, I see that as Tradars following up with a successful trade from the day before, which is cool, which was pound related. Cool. So anyways, looking at the calendar today, what's up? So consumer confidence at 10 a.m. Yeah, I don't really care. Okay, Aussie inflation. Yeah, that's going to be a nice one tonight. And uh, inflation going up. And if that is true, the way that we organize things, and I covered it yesterday, the way we organize things is they move to the back of the bus as far as who cuts interest rates uh, and in what order. Who cuts first? Switzerland. Who cuts next? Well, not Australia if inflation's going up. Coolio. And then the next big day is Thursday. Pretty, I call it pretty good Thursday. Which leads up to good Friday. Go to the score, well, scorecard summary. Well, actually, before we do that, I'll check my email. Do I have the email up? Where's the the email? Where's the, the email? Uh, 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 because, no, not that email. This one. Market open report received at 5.58 this morning. I got one pre-London six hours ago at 11.58. So then at 558, we got a new pattern by Quantbox emailed to me. Will it let me open? I have to open the thread. All right. So, anyways, that's from midnight. This is from six o'clock. NASDAQ became more bullish. Pound Kiwi became more bearish. Okay, now, how do you do that? Well, you go to like the scorecard summary, and this is what you're supposed to be watching and noting, right? Cool. So it's difficult to watch all this stuff, though. Pound Kiwi, okay, went more bearish. Okay, and therefore, how do you notice that? Well, then you go to a historical back test. Oh, I'm going to have to actually type it in. Oh, the burden. There we go. All 
Okay, and so it's watching these scores here and alerting you to the change. Okay, and you can see everything in blue is positive scores. You should be buying this asset. And the dotted line is what the asset's actually doing, pound kiwi. This is the actual pound kiwi daily chart. It's going up and it's going up and it's going up. And then all of a sudden it's going, price is going up. The quant box is losing it. It's losing it. It's like, I don't know. I don't like it so much. And notice when it was peaking, quant box was already negative. Interesting, huh? So anyways, a little heads up. Right? Just a little heads up. That and that's what those emails do. Now Boris says traders does not have the Australian CPI in the sonar section. Well, it it's looked at it on just dollar pairs. So it didn't look at Aussie Swissy, it didn't look at Aussie Yen, uh, but it looked at Aussie Dollar and the other dollar pairs. It looked at them before and after Australian CPI on th three or four different time frames. So two hours before, two hours after, four hours before, four hours after, a day before, a day after. And uh, then it went back. Uh, well, it, it, it displays. Uh, a year's worth of data, <clears throat> but technically it looks back seven years worth of data. Or up to, that's why we can't promise it, up to seven days worth of, or seven, sorry, seven years worth of data. <clears throat> and it simply just can't find a pattern. But there will be volatility and it is important. So Quantbox is looking at it to say, is inflation going up or is that going down? And it'll base a score. Inflation going up is not necessarily good. And that could also impact the monetary policy of the central bank that's trying to manage inflation, which Quantbox cares about too. Traders doesn't care about any of that. It just says it might provide volatility, but not in a predictable way. That's why it's great to have both. Like It's so cool. Literally, it's like two different employees, two different personalities doing two different jobs. Um and you want that, I think. I think you want that division of labor. Um, can you imagine your intern is making all your decisions for you? <laughs> right? Can you imagine? Sorry, Jim, you're going to have to sell, sell the Rolls Royce. You're like, why? Why do I have to sell my Rolls Royce? Well, your intern was wrong. <laughs> you, you have had a bad month. You're like, wait till I get a hold of that intern. He's going to have a bad month. But anyway, so like, no, like, uh, so it's great to have the division of labor, two different sets of analysis, completely different sets of analysis, nothing even remotely similar. And then take in the data. Super cool. Absolutely, totally super cool. But anyway, so like the, the, uh, the alert that we got this morning if you're part of the quant box uh, alerts, is the this market open? And it so you you knew this was happening, and how cool! And I just want to show you where it's getting the the brain, right? Where the brain is for that, because it's hard to watch this because you have to pick the assets. Well, how do you know which assets to watch? Oh, well, that's easy. It's over here in the scorecard summary. All you have to do is notice one of these has changed, and then you can go to the back tester and pull it up and you're like dude well it's hard to, <laughs> right it's hard to see one of these move you're like right it's hard to see these move well then you should have a machine do it because it's easy for a machine cool so that's how that works by the way and then looking at this the these are helping you find the things that you should be buying so as i showed you earlier today uh the german dax is up right now and euro pound is up right now and oil is up right now yeah but we knew that we've known that for quite some time so you go back to like uh go back to here 
uh, euro DAX uh, or euro pound. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve days ago. You became a bull on Euro Pound. But notice that the drop and then that recovery instantly quant box pulls back. We're at a four. Two days later, we're at neutral. Nice, right? Like, and remember it. It's not these these bars are not looking at the technical analysis and saying, okay, well, Wayne, that's a dip. We see that in a rally back. No, this is the one out of seven points. No, actually, one out of eight points is technical analysis. Everything else is economic data. So I don't know. What would you argue? Economic data is manipulated or influenced by technical analysis, or is technical analysis influenced by the economic data? And it's just a, a price representing what the economic data shows us. Well, it seems to be very much price related because, uh, you know, what is this, 80%, 82% of getting these scores has nothing to do with technical analysis. So cool, right? Technical analysis is following the fundamentals. We could take a look at uh, uh, DAX. That that's a big one that um, that Quant Box has been watching for a while. Oops. Okay, our price data is not working, but uh, but ignore the price data. Just look. Going back an entire month, very bullish on the German stock market. So that's where you could be in the business of buying dips, right? Cool. Look at strong bullish seasonality for DAX. Cool. All right. Um, cool. Neat. Nito, this is a trade from yesterday that Tradars, it was one of like the daily email that gets sent out. I looked at four of the trades that interest me. Like I don't trade Apple stock. I don't trade NVIDIA stock, so I didn't look at those. But I looked at some of the assets that I like to trade, and this was one of them, and this, this was the trade plan. Um, And then right up and our target was right where we are so yesterday's tradar's trade plan for this pair was up to here and out i'm just saying here my follow on is that tradar's gets me a, a half decent day trade right it was buying this green zone and exit here but i'm like well if you get that you know i'm going to try to turn this into a swing trade and it's selling kiwi but I think there are some Kiwi trades that are happening now, which are follow-ons by traders. So I get the correlating alert, which is the premium service at traders that came out. And it's like, you should sell pound Kiwi. Well, we just did quant box. What did we find? Well, it looks like Kiwi is making a comeback today. It looks like we have a higher high. Our, this is just a silly little five minute chart, but it looks like we got a bid today. And if it maintains that, that's a, a New Zealand dollar strength, right? But we also know the pound is a dog with fleas. So if we're getting this correlating alert this morning, which is only doing technical analysis, it's doing it on three time frames, uh, selling pound Kiwi. Well, it's cool because quant boxes essentially told us the same. And we saw that on the scatter plot, but we also see it in the weak pound. And if today is a recovery day for New Zealand, then you got that perfect little setup.
Okay. Now the thing is, how long will it last? Okay. So again, remember now tradars, which right only looks at technical analysis. So it's not thinking beyond, hey, if you sell this, you might be able to get to here. What would you do if you were the boss? And your intern says, uh, yeah, we could take it down there. Well, we would think through it a little bit, right? And say, well, there's two possibilities. Uh, technically, you can head down to here and then it would head up. What would you think about this fundamentally? Well, you might be walking into this as a bear anyways on the pound. And you're not so sure if you actually want to buy the Kiwi dollar. It's been weak. So you're not so sure. So do you, do you take the trade? Do you take the trade and exit at support for a little bit of profit? Or do you take the trade with the assumption that there's a reasonable probability that it actually dips down and then becomes more of a thing because you believe fundamentally this is weak and maybe for some fundamental reason Kiwi gets strong, like China. Okay. So you do that, right? So Denise says she might hold this based on what Quantbox is telling us. Yeah, well, that would be a use of, in, of information to make a, a decision. We don't know if it's right. We don't know if it's wrong. We don't know the future. So you, you need good underlying data. And you might come to the conclusion, well, there's some hope for Kiwi. And uh, you're already a bear on the pig, a great big pig. So you're like, well, it might be worth a shot, but I don't know if I want to pick up 25 pips on this trade. Uh, but I might be in it for 200. If I can get my if I can get my stop at zero, right? Or you wait for this. You don't take the traders trade today. You let it set up. Okay? But the thing is it's just part of the analysis. It gets you looking at the right thing for the right reason especially if you have fundamental and technical data pushing you in the right direction. You guys are going to end up trading more and more like portfolio managers than uh, day traders. And you have that type of de decision. You're going to, it's, I'm telling you, you have the tools now that are going to change the way you trade, <clears throat> trade, uh, change the way you behave, the change the way that you think about the markets and um yeah if you adapt correctly with the technology you will trade you'll start making decisions like a multi-billion dollar portfolio manager with a team and a staff and you're you know i mean really it's really something truly really is something if technology changes your behavior it's really kind of something Right? Like, for example, with the invention of Uber and Uber like, um, Uber like services. Why do people get pulled over for drunk driving? Completely unnecessary now. You're like, dude, you need an Uber home. You've had too much to drink. Cool. Well, that's a positive impact on human behavior, I think. Because those jerks always seem to hit minivans, and, I, and they somehow those guys survive. So, anyways, uh, it changes and has a positive impact on society in many ways. In this case, if the technology that we've developed to become better traders and investors changes our behavior, it's really a cool technology. Yeah.
Mm-mm-mm-mm. Yeah, before Uber, there was a service uh, in my community where uh, I can, I, I would drive my car to the bar, have have dinner, and then meet my buddies at the bar or whatever. And you have a couple of too many drinks, so you can't drive home. I'm like, well, but I got my fancy fancy pants car outside. I can't leave my car here. And so there was a service. You call it. They Two people would show up. One person drives you home in the their car, and the other person drives your car home and leaves it in the driveway. And it was it was cool. So there was never a need to drive home after drinking, right? And it was really cool. And then they invented something like Uber. The problem is you got to Uber there and Uber back, but whatever, better than killing innocent people, right? No excuse now. All right. Um, anything else going on? Okay. Remember all this fuss we've been making on gold? All the conversations we've had? And in particular, the discussion of, you know, inflation slowly but surely returning and even if that move in inflation is transitory then we could at least all agree that it's it stopped falling disinflation is gone so we either have no inflation or we have some inflation and in that situation you buy gold and we know since uh valentine's day quant box turned bullish which means you're in the business of buying dips. And this channel, and in this case, it's an Andrew's pitchfork that I drew yesterday at forex.today. It, what it's highlighting to you is it made a lower low. Oh, yeah. Then it made a big, bold move, more, more than 786 up, then a higher low, then a higher high, then a higher low, and go. Well, if you were already a bull and you were waiting to be bullish and you were looking at your charts, looking for bullish trade plans and patterns, um, there were multiple opportunities. And to, today's day trade is already gone, right? Like, so uh, if you're in my day trading group, you know, you're looking for moves like, okay, you have a higher high. So what's the plan if you're a day trader? easiest thing in the world you buy a higher low okay yeah so where's the higher low well we use daily pivot points this is a bullish buying zone so i would say oh i don't know somewhere around there maybe or you can use fibonacci or you can use whatever it doesn't even matter right but not a low not a lower low a higher low and so now we're rolling into the New York session, and it's already done, and that, that's how it's designed to work, actually. Cool. Neato, right? Neato. So now what for today? <clears throat> I don't know. But when it comes to, uh, I don't know, because the day trade's done, I guess you should look at it from a swing point of view. But uh, I want to point out that... the. You, you know, the tools that you have are screaming bloody murder. They're screaming. Are you listening? Like, <laughs> somehow I have a picture of, of an elephant staring at a flower. <laughs> we are here. We are here. Right? Uh, <laughs> uh, Horton hears a who. Yes. My itty bitties are going to college. <laughs> um, yes, I used to read stories every day. Yeah. Even Horton hears a who. Um, and wow, there's just nothing but green on the screen, basically. And you're like, Wayne, that's blue. Well, you know, I've asked the developers to make it green and they haven't. But anyways, uh, blue it is and blue is equal to green. And uh, we've been bullish for a very long time on gold, even if it's 
petering out here. Um, Quantbox, even even though price fell in the, you know, this is daily, right? So it's it's slow. Or you could say it's longer term. But even after a down day, Quantbox is upping its bullishness. So you're you're staring at the flower, and you should be hearing, buy the dip, buy the dip, buy the dip. Right? If you haven't heard the story, on the flower is a speck of dust, and on the speck of dust, there's an entire civilization all looking up to the sky, and they're trying to communicate to the elephant who's holding the flower and only he can hear the 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 civilization because he's got his big ears and everybody thinks he's crazy but they're all yelling up to the sky to try to communicate to him so anyways quan box is screaming without raising its voice you should be a bull you should be a bull right be a bull be a bull even though price had fallen and uh, and then, uh, there you go. So there's the drop and then the rise. Cool. Nito, I think we should leave it there because my uh, stories are going to get stranger and stranger. Yeah. And uh, well, if you want stranger stories, you have to buy me a drink. And <laughs> that usually works. <laughs> so I'll let you go. Peace on earth. May the pips be with you. May your profits be above average. I'll see you later uh, this morning. If you're in my swing trading group or day trading group at Investor Bootcamp, we are going to do macroeconomic research by going through and downloading all the economic reports over the last seven days and doing the dirty work that nobody else seems to have the ability or the willingness to do. But that is part of the foundation of greatness. So we'll do that just for the sake of doing it. And maybe it'll even be helpful. So I'll see you later. Cheers.